Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to tonight's masterclass from Hobby to Hustle, How to Make Money with Your Podcast. I am your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. I'm also the host of the Side Hustle Pro Podcast, which some of you might be coming from tonight. So, all right, wow, we got hands raised already. <laughs> I love it. I love the energy already. Tonight's going to be a great night, I could tell. So, we have a lot to cover, so I'm going to jump right into it. Um, I want to make sure that I get to all your questions because I see that questions are great. Questions are coming in. Do me a favor, put your questions in the Q and A field, um, and then tonight when I go through the Q and A, I'll answer them there. Don't even bother putting them in the chat; just put them in the Q and A. All right, because. My goal for tonight, like I said, I have a lot to cover, and my goal for tonight is to teach you my tips, my top three tips, really, for making money with your podcast. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna go over the three things you should stop doing with your podcast and what to do instead. We'll also review an easy, easy way to get listeners so that they stay connected and your show grows faster. And then finally, we'll be going through my favorite strategies to make money from your podcast that you can start using right away. And then also I will go over how you can get coaching from me. If you wanna to continue to learn from me, if you know you got all the germs from tonight and you want us to keep going, we can do that. So make sure you stay until the end though, because like I said, we're gonna have Q and A. And I got a little surprise for you. I do have a free Libsyn promo code for you to get started podcasting today or for you to switch podcast hosts and have the first month and a half free so you can podcast completely for for free host your show completely for free with Lipson. all right so stick around for those bonuses and q a all right so let me know who's here real quick before we jump in um with a show of one two three let me know like which boat you're in tonight. Um, so number one, you've been thinking about starting a podcast for a while, but you're kind of overwhelmed with how to start. Or two, you and your friends have a podcast idea and you want to make sure you do it right. Or number three, you have already started your podcast or are getting ready to start and want to make sure that you are being strategic. So let me see. I'm seeing a mixture. All right, so we got a mixture of one, a lot of threes. All right, well, you are all in the right place tonight, okay? No matter which boat that you're in. I love that there are a lot of podcasters already who have already started their show tonight. Um, usually there's like a mixture of people, but that's really cool because no matter which place you're in right now, tonight's masterclass is really going to help you tighten up your strategy. So um, let me do a quick rewind. Who's Nikayla? For those of you who don't know me, who just saw a Facebook ad and then jumped over here to this masterclass. Um, so I'm the host of a podcast. It's I launched it in 2016. It's called Side Hustle Pro. Since then, I've amassed over 9.5 million downloads for my podcast, and I earn multiple six figures in sponsorship each year from my podcast. So while I started a podcast, I was side hustling. So full-time, I worked at NPR back in 2016, and I led the digital marketing for some of your favorite podcasts, like How I Built This and Code Switch and so much more. So this was my side hustle, as I'm sure it is for many of you. And after a while, through these strategies that I'll show you tonight, I was able to leave my job, go full-time. So overall, I have over 15 years of experience as a marketer, and that's one of the key things that I teach my podcast mogul students, how to really, really market your podcast so that it will go from hobby to hustle. <laughs> um, so in 2017, like I said, I was able to quit my job to podcast full time. So in December 2017, that was a year and a half after launching my show in June 2016, I quit my job. And you can scroll back. Um, if you go over to the podcast, Side Hustle Pro, scroll back to December 2017, and you can listen to this episode all about what went into the decision and my plan at the time to move forward and all that good stuff. So fast forward to 2022, and Side Hustle Pro, my show, was actually inducted into the Podcast Hall of Fame by my peers in podcasting, Lipson, and the Podcast Hall of Fame Society. So that was a real full circle moment for me because 
I remember watching all these podcasters and just wanted to figure out how to make a living doing this. So to have grown to the point that I'm being inducted in the Podcast Hall of Fame was just an amazing, amazing milestone for me. Um, and a little bit on the personal side, um, this informs who I am very much. So I ha always have to share this. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm born in Jamaica. I grew up in the Boogie Down Bronx. This is me and my sisters back in Jamaica in front of our mango tree. <laughs> and um, I actually just came back from vacationing in Jamaica because podcasting gives me that freedom and flexibility. When I had a job, I had very few vacation days. Um, matter of fact, I didn't even have enough days to go on our honeymoon when me and my husband got married. And this picture here, I love this picture because to me, it's just the epitome of freedom because I waited, I had to wait a whole year to have enough vacation days. Well, I didn't, I, I went on my honeymoon in 2018. So I didn't have enough in 2017, but I had that delayed gratification once I was able to quit my job and be able to work anywhere on my own terms. We finally took our dream honeymoon to Zanzibar, which is where I am in this picture and Tanzania and just truly just enjoyed the ability to do that. So podcasting allowed me to quit my job, go on this honeymoon of my dreams. And it's also allowed me to work from anywhere, which has been clutch. Um, my husband Moyo and I were both certified side hustlers. We juggle parenting, careers, and our many entrepreneurial passions. So flexibility is huge for us. Um, being able to, at any moment, you know, go pick up our son or deal with a sick child, but work from home and not have to worry about being on Zoom meetings at work and all this other stuff is really, really huge for us. Um, so when I had a job, like I said, I had little to no family leave, but podcasting allowed me to stay home with my son for two whole years during the pandemic because we couldn't get him into a daycare, but I was still podcasting. I was still getting paid to podcast. So my life might've looked unconventional. I was in pajamas all day, <laughs> but I had a career. I have a career and I was, I'm getting paid. Um, so today, podcasting continues to allow me to work from anywhere while getting paid to podcast. And on the road to podcasting, I've done a lot of things right, but I've also done a whole lot of things wrong. Um, this was me in May 2015, for example. <laughs> um, I look pretty happy, right, and accomplished. I'm in a cap and gown, I'm looking like so successful. But what you don't see in this picture, so I'm here I am um, with at my MBA graduation. I'm graduating from the Michigan uh, Ross School of Business. And inside, I'm actually freaking out, but you, that you can't see that in the picture, but I'm actually freaking out because I was at this point rejected from the internship at Google that I thought would give me a full-time job after school. And I was graduating with no job and moving back to DC to live with my boyfriend, then boyfriend, now husband, with no income, barely any savings, like really, really embarrassing. I was like, how did I get here? How did I get to this point at my big age? where I am scrapping for coins and trying to figure out where I'm going to get my next check from. So once I got back, I didn't spend too much time, you know, wallowing in self-pity. I said, let me get to work. And like many of you, I started exploring ways to make money online, to make money from my personal brand. One of the things I did was I started blogging again um, because I knew I wanted to quote unquote, build my personal brand. But what is that? Right. I, I wasn't sure what that entailed. I'm sure some of you don't know what that entails. Um, so I did what you're doing now, which I started following people who were further ahead of me on the trail. So people like Amy Porterfield, people like Maya Elias were some of the first horses I ever invested in to learn a bit, a little bit more about how to really do my blog effectively. So because of that and those courses that I invested in, I relaunched my blog. It was still tacky, you guys don't laugh. <laughs> but, you know, I was going, I was taking forward direction, forward steps. Um, I had content at the time, but no purpose. But the important thing was that I got started. So kudos to all of you who are here tonight because you're getting started. Um, I want you to keep a list of everything you do every day to move you closer towards your dream life. This counts, okay? You are learning. So what I learned in my process of soul searching and figuring things out is, you always have to be willing to take the first step, even when you don't know where it's gonna lead. So 
For me, I continued to blog. I was still looking for a full-time job, but I was still investing in my personal side hustle, which was my blog. And as I started blogging, it started really broad with me um, blogging about every and anything because I really wanted to use it as a portfolio for um, marketing companies to hire me. But then I started gravitating to stories, human stories. And I realized the common thread that I just kept gravitating towards and putting on my blog were stories of Black women side hustlers and entrepreneurs. And that is how the idea for my podcast, Side Hustle Pro, was born. So a year before launching Side Hustle Pro, I didn't even know what a podcast was. Fun fact, I listened to my first podcast in 2015, and then a year later, I'm launching my show in 2016, you know? And then in the first seven days after launching Side Hustle Pro, I landed in the top charts. Like this is Side Hustle Pro number 10 in marketing on the left, and then number 37 in business on the right. And if you have a key, a key eye, you'll notice that I'm in the same company the same charts as Amy Porterfield, someone who I had looked to for guidance and advice. And even more coincidentally, we're now on the same podcast network, HubSpot. So life is just really funny and, you know, full circle like that sometimes. So anyway, I went hard on promotion, which I hope all of you guys, when you launch your shows, I hope you are at least trying to go hard on promotion, even though you may not know what to do yet. I hope you're trying something. So I, I went hard on promotion that summer because I started to realize that I was onto something. People were interested in this topic. If I took this seriously, I could quit my job. So I started studying podcast monetization, aka what we're talking about tonight, how to make money from podcasting. And guess what? I had to invest to learn that. <laughs> I invested in courses to learn how to pitch sponsors. Um, at the time, there were no courses like the one I have now where I'm teaching you exactly how to pitch sponsors, exactly how to make money. Instead, I had to go to something kind of adjacent, a, a, a two-day event sponsorship intensive. So there was no content about podcasting, but I said, you know what? Let me apply what I learned here about pitching and media kits and all of that and apply it towards my podcast. So that's what I did. I wasn't podcast specific, but I was eager to learn anything at all, anything at all about podcasting and, and sponsorship, excuse me. So then six months after launching my podcast, I pitched my first sponsor cold, meaning I didn't know anyone at the company. I didn't, <laughs> I never pitched before, but I pitched them cold and guess what? From that email, that ended up landing me my first $4,000 podcast sponsorship contract. That was almost my, my whole monthly paycheck at work. And so that made me realize like, hey, <laughs> if I can do this and I really can do this consistently, I can leave my job. So you know what I did? I kept learning and pitching and growing. Um, at the time, Side Hustle Pro was featured on Apple in the New and Noteworthy section, in the Bold Women category, and by three years in, I was featured on the Today Show, on Oprah Magazine, on Forbes. Momentum, you guys, consistency. This is three years of podcasting, okay? This is not six months in, this is not a year in, this is three years in. I even hosted my own live show with another full circle moment, Maya Elias in the guest chair in 2019. So now let's talk about how I did it and how you can do it too. How did I go from graduating with no job, no money, no savings to the podcast hall of fame? All right, get ready, you guys, because we're going to talk about my top three tips. Like I said, my top three tips to go from hobby to hustle with your podcast. So I'll read through the tips and then I'll break them down one by one, all right? So if you're doing something right now, I encourage you to stop. <laughs> I encourage you to get ready to write stuff down, screenshot, all of that good stuff. So tip number one, the three, we're gonna go over the three things you should stop doing with your podcast and what to do instead. So I'll break down the quickest way to stand out in podcasting, stand out from the masses and gain attention from day one. Attention is your best friend for growth. 
Tip two, we'll go over an easy way to get listeners so that they stay connected and your show grows faster. So I'll teach you um, one of my hacks, which is using Instagram to find your listeners before you launch and how to gain your first 1,000 downloads and keep growing from there. And you also need listeners to make money because if no one's listening to your show, how are you going to sell anything? How are you going to make money? <laughs> and then finally, tip three, my favorite strategies to make money from your podcast that you can start using right away. So I'll teach you how to set yourself up to get there. So now let me break it all down. Let me break it all down, you guys. Um, sometimes I just like to go back into the chat and like it takes forever for the chat to pop back up. <laughs> so make sure any questions that arise as I break things down, you guys, put them in the Q&A because we're going to have Q&A at the end of this. All right. So let me break it all down. Tip number one, the three things you should stop doing with your podcast and what to do instead. So number one, stop doing this. Keeping your podcast super broad so you don't put yourself in a box. Number two, stop doing this starting a general conversation podcast with the homies and making your podcast title vague or a play on words. And then finally, number three, stop, definitely stop doing this. Launching in-person video podcasts before you even master audio podcasting. So now let me tell you what to actually do. Um, here's what happens when you do these things. Before I even get into that, here's what happens. Um, you make it hard for people to find your show when you're, they're searching for the topics you discuss, when you make yourself too vague, your titles, your description, all of that. And then you make it hard for people to know what your show is even about, and that it's for them. They're going to scroll right past. They're not going to share it. They're just not going to get it, all those inside jokes or play on words that you're trying to do. And then finally, what you do when you make those mistakes that I'm telling you to stop doing is you end up wasting a lot of money on overhead costs before you start making money from your show. What we want to do is keep our show as lean and cheap as possible. I'm not saying it has to look cheap, but you have to keep what you're investing in it lean. Only invest in the essentials. Don't go into in-person studio time and all this other stuff until you start making money from your show. So here's what you should do instead to go from hobby to hustle with your podcast. Um, first of all, define your audience. Get clear on who your show is for. And hint, your show is not for you, okay? A lot of people like to say, oh, um, you know, I'm interested in this and this show is for people like me. Make sure you go out and you validate that hypothesis that people want the show that you're creating. Then I want you to define your niche. Get clear on what your show is about and your show's angle. So I talk about side hustling. My niche, my show's angle is about Black women entrepreneurs who have scaled from side hustle to full-time entrepreneurs. There's plenty of side hustle podcasts out there, and that's actually a good thing because that shows that there's an audience for it. And now you have to get clear on what will make my show different? How will I stand out amidst all these other shows that talk about this thing? And then the third thing you're going to do is make it easy for people to find you. So if I have a show about side hustling and I don't put side hustling in the title, I am missing a huge opportunity. I'm making it one step harder for people to find me, right? Same thing, use clear and targeted language for your show title, description, and episode titles. And there are different ways that you can do this. We get into this in a more specific and granular and detailed way inside of podcast moguls. You don't necessarily have to be super literal with your title, but you do have to make sure between your title, your subtitle, your description, or your show artwork that it is clear what your show is about. So I'm preaching to y'all because I did this. I made these mistakes. <laughs> so let me show you some before and afters, both for myself and other podcast moguls. So before I started Style House of Pro, I talked about the blog I have, right? The blog I had was called Kayla K Speaks. Nobody knew how to pronounce it. Nobody knew what it meant. When you see that name, it doesn't mean anything to you. You don't think of a topic. You don't think of anything, right? Because you don't know what it's about. So after taking some time to really flesh out my interests and what I was gravitating to, I ultimately rebranded to Side Hustle Pro. And by the time I launched my podcast, 
I rebranded to Side Hustle Pro. So it's now clear that I'm talking to people who've gone from side hustlers to full-time entrepreneurs. You get me? And remember, please to put your questions in the q and I'll only be answering questions from the Q&A field, okay? All right, so another before and after is my student, Erica McAfee from the um, Erica McAfee. Well, she started out with the Erica McAfee podcast. That's how she came into the group. Again, as you can see by this title alone, you have no idea what the show's about, right? Erica McAfee is her name. It doesn't stand for a particular topic or subject. And she's actually talking about pregnancy and infancy loss on her podcast, but she wouldn't know it from that name. It's a common mistake that a lot of people make though. You think, well, I want a personal brand, so I'm gonna name my show after myself. Um, in actuality, you need to name your show after your topic and what you're discussing. So she, through going through the modules and the lessons, revamped and rebranded to Sisters in Lost podcast. And she still included her name, which is fine, with Erica McAfee. And she included subtle hints to who she's talking about. Like if you can see in the background um, behind the yellow, it's some African print, just to kind of give a hint to her audience. And of course, including her face still, allows people to see that this is a brown face talking about sisters in loss. Um, that's what the, the sisters is about. And it gives all those clues without having to be overtly literal. And then her show description and her titles can do the rest of the work. Another before and after, <laughs> um, this is my podcast mobile student, Lori Tharps. She started out, she came into the program. She had a blog called My American Melting Pot and she wanted to um, start this podcast, My American Melting Pot. As you can see, it's beautiful artwork, <laughs> but what does it mean, right? It, it doesn't scream to you like this is about this particular thing. It could mean so many things. Everyone's take on American Melting Pot is different. But after some time, some soul searching, and um, she eventually left her job, started a new business, all about helping authors, because she's actually an author. So helping authors read, write, and create their own stories, novels, pitch books, and all of the above, and to give them that encouragement while they're on the writing path. So she went from something that was super broad to super specific, and guess what? Her podcast now serves as like a lead magnet that introduces her to clients and helps her get work and clients. And we'll talk a little bit more about Lori in a bit. So as you saw, three different examples of how you truly need to make sure that it's easy for people to find you. So before Kayla K Speaks, after Side Hustle Pro. Before Erica and McAfee Podcast, after Sisters in Laws Podcast. Before My American Melting Pot after read, write, and create. So I hope you're starting to get and you know really think to yourself, what do I, what have I titled my podcast? What have I thought about titling it? And is that really helping people to understand what my show is about and what to come to me for? Because that's the first step in making money. When you establish yourself as an authority and when you establish yourself as someone who knows something about a particular topic, that is the first step in making money and from hobby to hustle. So very important, make it easy for people to find you when they Google you, when they Google words and keywords related to your show, you better be coming up like I am for Black Women's Side Hustle Podcast, like Erica is for Pregnancy Loss Podcast. You need to make sure that your podcast name, your podcast description, and your episode titles and your episode descriptions are helping you by having those keywords, by being very, very specific and clear what that person can expect when they listen. So let's recap real quick. Here's what you should do to go from hobby to hustle with your podcast. Um, number one, define your audience, get clear on who your show is for. Number two, define your niche, get clear on what your show is about and your show specific angle. And number three, make it easy for people to find you. Use clear and targeted language for your show title, description, and episode titles. Ooh, all right. So people are saying amazing nuggets in the comments. Enjoyed this. Great info. All right. I love it. I love it. And remember, questions go where? In Q&A. In Q&A, y'all put those questions in Q&A, okay? 
<laughs> Thank you guys. All right, tip number two, an easy way to get listeners so that they stay connected and your show grows faster. Um, like I said before, in order to make money, you need listeners. And in order to jumpstart getting listeners, you have to go out there and you have to let people know your show is out there. They're not just going to come. They're not just browsing for new podcasts every day. Most people are opening up their podcast app and they're listening to their favorites. So you got to do some work. And that work can start with one of my favorite shortcuts, which is Instagram. Okay. But there's some misconceptions about Instagram. So most people think that you need like a lot of followers on Instagram to promote anything or that your Instagram feed needs to be perfectly color coordinated with filtered photos and the perfect sequence like Beyonce. Well, here's what happens when you think that. You don't even try to create content and you guys done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect, okay? So if you don't create content, you miss out on opportunities to share with your audience or make money. You can't make money if you don't talk about what you sell, talk about what you do right? So your audience and your opportunities for making money are going to remain stagnant if you get stuck in that thought pattern. So here's what you should do instead to go from hobby to hustle with your podcast. Tip number two, just focus on getting in front of the right followers. Just focus on getting in front of the right followers. What do I mean by the right followers? I mean, the people who will be interested in your podcast. Those are the people that will click the link in your bio and grow your podcast downloads and, you know, click on your freebie, join your email list. Those are the people that will take those steps. So let me do a quick podcast moguls case study to show you how this all works. All right. Uh, Mona says, make so much sense. Thank you. I'm glad this is making sense for you guys. Um, so I want to show you how to build your podcast audience by targeting the right followers on Instagram. So meet Ashley. She's a podcast moguls alum. Um, she has the Stacks in the City podcast. And she used what I coined the Side Hustle Pro OMG formula to gain her first 1,000 downloads. So there are three steps in OMG. The O, the M, and the G all stand for a step. Step one is the O, obsessively audit. That means once you know who you're talking to, who your listener is, and you know what topic they're interested in. So for Ashley, it would be Black women in finance, Black women in accounting, Black women in budgeting. You would audit, okay, what kind of content is doing well on those hashtags? Who else is in the space, such as who's further ahead of me, such as the budget Nista? Um, what kind of content does well on her page? And you do this not to copy, but to understand the content buckets that you want to start trying out, whether it is you doing face to cam videos where you're sharing tips, whether it is you're doing slides where you're sharing tips, all these different things you can start to list out as content types when you do this kind of auditing. So after you do that, step number two is the M in OMG. You got to go out there and make friends, all right? Think of this like you're at a networking event. You're going up to people. You're introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Nikayla. I'm the host of the Side Hustle Podcast. It's about Black women, Black women entrepreneurs who scale from side hustlers to full-time entrepreneurs. You should check it out. Um, and you're not going to actually say that in the DMs or nothing. <laughs> but what you're going to do is you're going to follow to introduce yourself, um, especially in these virtual times, you guys. This is not follow for follow. I'm not telling you to go out there and just follow, 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 and hope everyone follows you back. No, you're going to be extremely targeted. You're going to spend some time um, research, like you'll go over to, for example, if you were Ashley and, and you were um, trying to gain followers for your podcast about budgeting and finance, you might go over to the Budget Nista's page, see who's following her, introduce yourself to some of her followers, right? And then... This is what's possible with making friends in this strategic manner, you know, AKA connecting with the right followers on Instagram. So this is a screenshot from, you know, what someone commented for me when I found them and I followed them and I introduced myself on Instagram. Um, this person in the Kira show wrote, listening in now, I don't know how you found me on IG, but thank God you did. My work days will be spent catching up on past podcasts. So people will actually thank you. And even if they don't, they're probably going to be grateful because they didn't know your show existed before you took that first step and introduced yourself. 
Um, this is another one. Someone said, OMG, your friend request really just brightened my day. I love your podcast. I actually binge listen to them and they're wonderful. Keep it up, girl. So I keep these screenshots as a reminder that this process is how I organically and authentically started to build my side hustle pro tribe. And this is how you start to build yours as well. And then finally, you do step number three, the G in OMG, which is go over the data. All of this is one big test. You are testing for the rest of your life. You're never not testing because the algorithm changes. Um, Instagram prioritizes different types of content. People change. So every week you're going to go in there and, and reminder, you need to have a business Instagram profile or a creator Instagram profile to see your insights. Once you have that established, go in and look at that data. Where are your followers coming from? When are they most active? Make sure you, you're posting when they're most active. Um, which content types did the best? Which content type had the most impressions? Which one might've had less impressions, but more comments? Pay attention to those things and then focus on doing more of those. You don't need to do only the most popular kind of content. However, you need to know where's the best place to spend your time, especially as side hustlers. We don't have time to be spending hours and hours creating content, all right? See what's working, do more of that. So here's what happened to Ashley as a result of doing the OMG formula, okay? Remember, this is a case study, so I'm going to show you what happened in her case. Um, so Ashley went from having 758 to 1,216 Instagram followers in less than eight weeks in podcast moguls. And she has even more than that now. And for some of you guys who think, oh, wait, that's, that's not a lot, let me tell you something. Stacks in the City, her podcast, went from having 300 monthly downloads to 1,400 monthly downloads in less than eight weeks inside of Podcast Moguls doing this formula. Excuse me. So I'm actually showing y'all a sneak peek of what I teach inside of Podcast Moguls. Like this is a formula that we work on inside of the group. And in case you weren't tracking that jump and again, thought, think those numbers look small, that's actually a 4X jump in her monthly downloads, you guys. Let me know if you would like that for your show. I know many of you have already started your podcast. So let me know if you would love that for your show. I think we would all love a 4X jump. <laughs> so why is getting in front of the right followers so important, y'all? Because as your followers grow, so do your downloads and so does your audience. All right, Stacks in the City, she landed in the top business charts on Apple Podcasts. Now, there are hundreds of thousands of business podcasts, um, close to millions now. So for you to land in the top 200 is an amazing feat, especially as an independent, small podcaster. So that shows that you're doing intentional work to drive listenership, which then drives downloads and action, which then drives the, the charts. So you don't even have to always use your podcast, right? Ashley has grown beyond podcasting now, but because she has this platform, the podcast lives on. People will listen to this podcast 24 seven, even when she's not putting out a new episode. It lives on as your portfolio, your living resume, your living validation of what you can do. So because of the Stacks in the City platform and sharing her expertise, Ashley has expanded her personal brand and income generating opportunities beyond podcasting. She now hosts workshops like House Hunters Workshop because she has bought, sold, bought again, several properties, all right? This is a young woman, early 30s, and she is killing it in the real estate game. So she now hosts her own workshops and speaks and all these other things as a result of gaining this audience on the Stacks in the City platform. And you can do the same. As your, as your downloads grow, so will your money-making opportunities. <laughs> um, Lady Tiffany Nicole said, yes, Lord, a 2X is even good enough for me. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you know what? I realize um, you guys might not be seeing the comments, right? All right, so let me make sure you're seeing. Oh, you are seeing it. Okay. So now, check-in time. Let me know if this is helpful for you. Give me a yes in the chat if it is. Quick yes. Um, you know, grab a sip of water. This is a little break time. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm seeing lots of yeses. I'm seeing a huge capital yes from Asia. All right, love to see it, love to see it. So now let's talk about, let's do a quick recap and then get into tip three. So let's recap. To start building a bigger audience, which will help you go from hobby to hustle, you need to target the right followers and using Instagram is a quick hack to help you jumpstart this process. So use the OMG formula, O, obsessively audit, M, make new friends. G, go over that data. Okay. All righty. Tip number three. Tip number three. Hold on. All right. My favorite strategies to make money from your podcast that you can start using right away. Um, before we even start about talking about the strategies, I want you guys to know what the most key thing about <laughs> this is when you're making money podcasting. You got to get to know your listeners. If you don't know who listens to your show, you can't create a product for them. If you don't know who listens to your show, you can't pitch sponsors because sponsors want to know who they're going to be talking to. What are they going to be? What kind of result can they expect? So the first thing you have to do is truly have an understanding. Who is my listener? Where does this person live? How old are they? Where do they get their news and their information? What do they like? What are their challenges? What are they looking for? And that will help you with each step moving forward. So that's how you prepare to get money. So like I said, listen to your listeners. What are their challenges? What are their needs? What products do they talk about? What conferences do they attend? What services do they use? What questions do they have? Free work, free work. To make money podcasting, you can use lead magnets, aka freebies, to grow your email list. So you want to grow your email list. You want to have a direct line of communication with your audience. Just like I was able to email you guys reminders, and that's why you're here tonight. That's why you want to grow your email list. So you do this by having freebies related to what you talked about on your podcast tell people hey click the link in my bio and then start to grow your email list that way so a freebie is something like what I have here which is a free guide how to start your side hustle journey right I have the ultimate guide to getting your first side hustle up and running in 30 days and by the way you can get this at sidehustlepro.co slash start here but this is one of my signature freebies and from there once you started to build your audience, so the pre-work was getting to know your listeners, listening to your listeners, start to build that email list. And then now let's get into your options. How are you going to make money? Um, you have choices. A lot of people, when they think about podcasting, they immediately think about sponsors, sponsors, sponsors. That is one way. And every way is going to include hard work. So you have to choose your heart. Option one. You could actually create your own um, eBooks or courses, charge money for it, promote it on your show and to your email list. And so you're directly providing your audience what they ask you for. So for me, I have my podcast moguls program. I have my master of the brand program and I teach people what I know. And by the way, these were developed um, almost two years into my podcasting journey because after a while I just kept getting requests <laughs> for this information. And so I decided to develop a program and a course to finally give people a way to get all this information in one place. Because I can only do so many uh, pick my brain sessions, right? Option two, you can actually develop products for your listeners, AKA podcast merch, and make sure you're developing products that listeners love and they need and they ask for. So here's an example from the podcast, The Read. Um, people love their logo. They were asking for that. They, so they have t-shirts, hoodies, um, beanies. They have um, some of their favorite slogans like break up with him that people keep repeating from them because it's become a signature phrase that they do. Uh, words mean things and all of the above, right? So these are products and you know that your audience really wants it when they start requesting too. Like, I need that t-shirt. You can test out your t-shirt, wear it on your profile, your Instagram profile a lot. And if people start asking you in the DMs, I need one of those, I need that shirt. Create the shirt, create the, the merchandise. <laughs> so I also have products for side as a pro. Again, if people start asking you, hey, where's the, how, how can I get that gold mug? Tell them you can get it on my site. <laughs> um, so option three, is the one that, like I said, people think about most often, which is pitching brands. 
and having sponsors for your show. These were some of my first sponsors, Skillshare, FreshBooks, Squarespace. All of these are brands that help side hustlers. So when I am aligning myself with brand partners, I'm thinking about my listener because I know my listener and I know what she needs. I'm able to say, oh, this would be a good fit. And I'm able to tell the brand, this is exactly who you'll be talking to. And they're, they're able to say, oh yeah, that's, that's exactly who we want to talk to. So it, it fosters a really good partnership and great return on investment for the brand. So that's why you want to make sure you truly understand who's listening to your show. And then another option, option four, you can create paid subscriptions for your podcast. You can do it directly through Apple Podcasts or through a third-party platform like a Patreon. And when you do this, you want to go and review competitive analysis, what other podcasters are doing, what the market is bearing right now in terms of price. Because yes, if a podcast that's further ahead and has a bigger listenership than you and is offering way more in each of their membership levels is charging $7.99, no, you cannot come in and charge $19.99, <laughs> okay? You need to do your research and understand what makes sense and what is reasonable based on the market. So those were some of the four options. Well, the four, my four favorite options actually for making money. They're not the only options at all. Um, some of my podcast mobile students like Lori Tharps, who we'll hear from again later in the presentation, she started a ghostwriting business and a lot of her clients came to her because of her podcast. So her podcast is kind of a lead magnet that introduces her to potential leads, aka clients who you know come on her email list, learn more about what she's doing and end up being clients. And then she makes you know, six figure deals from each of those clients. So she doesn't need um, a huge number of downloads. She doesn't need a huge number of clients because she can only work with so many people at once. So there are many ways to make money podcasting, um, but you need to prepare yourself to get there. So first of all, you wanna launch your show. You wanna grow your audience using methods like OMG and the additional marketing methods I teach inside of Podcast Moguls. You want to do your pre-work of building your email list. And then, then and only then, you should decide on your revenue path. And as you are deciding, try out one thing at a time. So if you're creating a service, start small and test to make sure that it's something your listeners really want and need. If you're creating a product, start with one to two products at a time. Don't go ham, create everything in the world. If creating a paid subscription, research the market, like I said, to decide what to include, what fellow podcasters charge for their subscription tiers, what makes sense. And if pitching sponsors, you're going to develop a media kit and you're going to start cold pitching, aka emailing. And by the way, I provide examples and a pricing calculator for what to charge based on how many downloads you have inside of the podcast moguls program. So I do give you additional coaching on that. I want everyone to make money from their show. So that's um, the goal of podcast moguls is really to get you from hobby podcaster and out of that mentality to thinking like a business podcaster. So let's do a quick rewind. Um, let's go over what we learned in this masterclass. Um, we went over tip number one, which are the three things you should stop doing with your podcast to go from hobby to hustle and what to do instead. We went over tip number two, um, an easy way to get listeners so that they stay connected and your show goes faster. And finally, we went through tip number three, which is my favorite strategies to make money from your podcast that you can start using right away. So we covered a lot, you guys. And I know right now you might feel several ways. You might feel overwhelmed, like you want to launch and grow your podcast, but you're trying to do everything at once. Or you might feel stuck, like your podcast is not growing fast enough and you don't understand why. You're not getting enough downloads and you know that, hey, it's probably because I don't have a blueprint. Uh, it's probably because I'm just out here guessing. <laughs> or you might feel determined right now, like, hey, I know the value of having a podcast 
and you're ready to do what it takes to grow. So let me know how you're feeling right now. Um, are you stuck? Are you determined? Are you overwhelmed? Put it in the chat. Let me know what's going through your guys' head right now. And remember, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna say it again, put those Q and A's, Mona, in the Q and A section. I'm not coming back to the chat, okay? <laughs> People are feeling determined. All right, I love it, I love it. Well, I wanna make sure all of you guys know that you have options. Um, we're gonna get into Q&A. Before we get into q and I want you to know that you do have the option to keep working with me, right? So option one, you can keep trying to DIY your podcast. You can get tips gathered all over social media and YouTube. The problem is though that lots of people like to say lots of things and <laughs> you don't know if they're making money, how much money they're making and all that other good stuff, or if they're, inducted into the podcast hall of fame like myself or you know have nine million downloads and all that good stuff i'm i'm laying it on the table and letting you know how i've grown zero to nine million so your option two is you can decide to make podcasting a priority and get my membership and my mentorship to know exactly where to start and what steps to take so i want you to know that you're invited to join podcast moguls if you'd like further coaching from me you're welcome to join. I wanna share with you a little bit more about what the program entails, and then we will get into Q&A. So first of all, Podcast Moguls is a mentoring program that teaches my proven and effective marketing strategies to podcasters who want to have a hit podcast, grow a bigger following, and make money from their podcasts. So Podcast Moguls is for you if you want to get access to my mentorship and coaching and my podcast business advice. It's for you if you want to, if you like the simple and effective strategies that I teach you tonight and you wanna keep getting more of those so you understand how to promote your podcast and grow your audience. It's for you if you want to learn how to pitch sponsors at any podcast size. And it's for you if you want to learn how to make money from your podcast at any podcast size. So there are three components to podcast moguls. Um, part one is the actual course. And in that, that's an on-demand course where I teach you my eight-step podcast success curriculum, which includes video lessons, tutorials, templates, swipe files, all my guides. Um, these are all of the modules. Module zero is the fundamentals where I go over equipment, setup, hosting, podcast publishing. Module one, I get into refining your topic, finding your perfect listener. Module two, I get into positioning your podcast. Module three, we go over launching your podcast. And module four, we get into marketing your podcast. So growing that Instagram reach. Module five, marketing your podcast and growing your email reach. And then module six, we will get into Facebook and Instagram advertising one-on-one. -on -one. And module seven, we get into monetization. So how to position your podcast. And module eight, how to create your winning pitch. So in addition to the actual course, which is part one, you also have the community. So inside of Podcast Moguls, we have a private community. You can come in, you can ask your questions, you can share your wins. Here we have Felicia from the Trill MBA podcast who shared when she was number 53 in iTunes careers. Again, Podcast Moguls, they hit the charts. They hit the charts when they come in and they start following the blueprint. And then part three of the program is, like I said, the coaching and the mentorship from myself. Um, we meet monthly for video group coaching calls. Um, just like this one, you receive personal guidance from me. We get into deep dives on topics. Case in point, this particular day, we got into a deep dive on editing. I brought in my editor, Chris, to share more about um, to answer everyone's questions about their really specific questions about editing. So I bring in the experts and this lesson is actually still available. If you come in, this is still available and you can catch all of the tips that Chris shared that night. So I, I just want you to know that I can talk till I'm blue in the face and sing the praises of podcast moguls, but <laughs> I'm not the only one. The podcast moguls alums also really sing the praises. So this is Shirley of the She's Got Drive podcast. Um, she wrote that, you know, I only started implementing her marketing strategies about three months ago. And this is what I found. I had at that point 25,000 downloads. And in the last three months, I'm now at 46,000 downloads. Her strategy absolutely works. 
So she, within three months of really buckling down, following the blueprint, she almost doubled her downloads. So I remember Asia, I think it was you who said, I want 2X downloads. That is possible for you. Um, and this is what Fritz of the Coin Gamma podcast had to say. So Fritz came in, he just wanted to do this podcast because he was bored. He really likes talking about cryptocurrency. But by following the steps and blueprint and podcast moguls, he ends up making a name for himself in the industry and being flown out to speak at over five conferences, even being flown in internationally to speak at conferences, all because of the podcast. So just to quickly, you know, recap what you're getting. You're getting monthly live coaching sessions, which in and of itself is a $4,000 value if you were to get four sessions with me. So you're guaranteed four sessions. And after that, you can come back for as long as the, the live sessions are going on. Um, but that is just like what it would cost for four sessions with myself. Then you're getting annual community access. I know people who charge upwards of $197 a month. That's $2,364 a year to be in their Facebook group. And that's every single year they're paying that $197 a month to be in those Facebook groups. But all of that's included inside of Podcast Moguls for no additional charge. Plus, you're getting all of my sponsorship pitch letters and my media kits, which you know, just to get the sponsorship information, I had to spend $1,197 on a two-day intensive that did not have any follow-up group, did not have any Q&A, none of that. Um, so that's included and it's again all part of one flat fee plus you're getting my guest pitch templates the exact emails that I send out to people to get them in the guest chair um, most recently someone put on my YouTube video like hey I started a podcast interviewing business owners how do you get these people <laughs> and I haven't responded yet but I'm gonna let her know like hey I have a whole template if you're interested um, so when you invest in podcast moguls, I also have a bonus for you. It's Master the Gram, which is the more detailed program on building an engaged audience on Instagram. I get into an even more thorough breakdown. And by the way, anytime these programs are updated, this one will be updated by the end of this year. You still have access to the 2.0 versions. So invest now because the price may go up. <laughs> Excuse me. So you're getting monthly live coaching sessions. You're getting annual community access. You're getting all of my sponsorship pitch letters and media kits. You're getting my guest pitch templates, plus Master the Gram. Plus, as a bonus, you'll also get Goal Getter Action Plan, which is my productivity blueprint for side hustlers. It's a process that I use to juggle my side hustle as a podcast while I was working full time. I was coming home, rushing home, doing interviews after work and all of that. And I share my system. And by the way, when I say bonus, these bonuses are included for everyone. I'm going to get into some bonuses that are only for paying full people in a bit. But these bonuses, if you join, are included in podcast moguls. So you're getting monthly live coaching sessions, annual community access, all of my sponsorship pitch letters and media kits, the guest pitch templates plus master the gram, plus the goal getter action plan. And if you were to total that all up, it's a value of $8,553. Of course, I'm not charging you that, but I want you to understand the value. I cannot overstate the value of this program and what I'm providing. And the actual cost, especially for being here tonight, you get a promotional price of $9.97. So Regular price, $3,000, but you save $2,000 today as a masterclass participant. So you have two options. And by the way, head over to sidehustlepro.co slash podcast moguls to join right now. You can, I'm going to go ahead and wait, I'm going to stop sharing for one second and just share that link with you guys. Um, so make sure that you can start checking out the Oops. So there you go. Oh, thank you, Joanna. <laughs> All right. So let me get back to sharing my screen with you guys. So you have two options you'll see when you go to the page. Um, hold on. Let me make sure. Can you guys? All right. Are you guys seeing my slides? All right. So you have the option of 
paying 997, which is paying in full, and you will get a bonus for paying in full. Um, we do have some bonuses for those who pay in full. So make sure that if you want those bonuses, you do that, or you have the option of four monthly payments of $297. So the doors are now open officially for podcast moguls. Head over to sidehustlepro.co slash podcast moguls to join. The link is in the chat. So you can go ahead and check out the full page, the full checkout page. Um, and I know that many of you guys, you came here tonight and it's like, um, what, you know, would it be worth it? Do I, should I invest in this? All those different things that you're contemplating. Let me share with you how I make these kind of decisions, how I knew when to invest in something in my business, which ultimately helped me grow. So I do the, would it be worth it to you if equation? <laughs> so would it be worth it to you if podcast moguls helped you quit your job, for example. So that's what happened to Lori of the Read, Write, and Create podcast. I told you we'd hear some more from Lori. So Lori said, um, she recently shared that I quit my full-time job as a tenured professor and moved to Spain in 2021. After I proved to myself that I could match my academic salary with my side hustle as a freelance writer. She's gone on to write four books, hundreds of articles, and what she really what she really shares is that she discovered this side hustle of ghostwriting books for celebrity personalities the book that ghostwriting hustle changed everything for her so then she decides you know what i know i have this my american melting pot um podcast but i'm actually going to pivot so she launched a podcast using her mogul's training that the podcast is pretty much a sales funnel now to attract creative writing students and coaching clients. She says, I am seriously following the Nikayla Matthews Akome methodology, and I'm continuing to see results and growth in my business. Later this year, I'll be hosting my first writing retreat in the South of Spain. So this is what's possible when you put your mind to really implementing what is taught inside of the program. And you could also ask yourself, would it be worth it to you if podcast moguls helped you land major sponsors? So if you're in this game and you're trying to figure out, how do I do this sponsorship thing? How do I really get money? Well, this is what happened to Tolu of the UI Narrative Podcast. She started out um, coming to the webinar like you guys, joining the program. She actually had no podcast, no idea what her podcast would be about through going through the modules and the refine your podcast ideas module especially, she ultimately decided to launch UI Narrative. UI is user interface design, which is what she does. And she started interviewing people in this field. And guess who came knocking? Google. Google came knocking, found her, approached her, and sponsored her podcast. And she is a small indie podcaster. This is not someone who came out the gate with hundreds of thousands of downloads and still when you know who your listeners are, when you niche down and you focus on a particular angle, the sponsors are still interested. Remember though that the only way to learn right now is through action. You have to take action one way or the other. So I wanna give you guys a bonus. For those of you guys who take the pay in full action, I wanna reward you with a phone call. So we'll actually have a one-on-one -on -one strategy call to go through your ideas, your strategies, where you're stuck and how to really make the most of the program. I don't do this often. <laughs> I might actually never do this again. I have not done these calls since uh, 2019, you guys. That's how long I have been offered strategy calls. So take advantage of it while you can. So again, the first five people to pay in full tonight will receive this strategy call. And as a painful bonus, you'll also get my pitch email that landed me my first $4,000 in sponsorship. You also get my five-day branding blitz, which are the exact steps I took to come out the gate, you know, blazing up the charts, number 10 in marketing on the left, number 37 in business on the right. And then you also get my pitch email to Apple that landed me in new and noteworthy. So featured in the Apple podcast app, I'll show you exactly what I sent to them. And then finally, my pitch email that landed me my first international speaking engagement in Barbados. So you can take 
the strategies I use in these emails. And you can literally pitch everyone. You, you can get so much when you know how to approach people in a way that <laughs> is attractive and intriguing to them. So again, I want to reward those who take that pay in full um, <laughs> um, response. All right, cool beans. So before, for real this time, before we get into q and <laughs> I'm just finally going to share with you the power of podcast moguls through the eyes and the words of fellow alums, because I mean, who knows best than the people who went through the program and really learned from it. So this is Dr. Alicia Franklin of the Research Her podcast. When she joined, she actually shared her growth chart. Um, she said, I started podcasting in November. I had no clue what in the world I was doing nor how to market the episodes. I just thought that people were going to show up. Most people think that if you build it, they will not come. All right. You got to do work to get them to come. She said, I obsessed over the course and relaunched the podcast within a month of joining the program with so much more vision. Thanks to Nikayla. I went from hundreds of downloads to thousands. And you can literally see that growth chart. That is what I want for you as well. Like what you're doing right now, I bet you most of you are averaging hundreds. Some of you may be in the thousands, but you've reached a plateau. All podcasters reach a plateau. How do you push through that with the strategies I teach? All right. This is Nia Clark of the Black Wall Street Podcast. So she came in like Lori Tharp. She came in with a completely different podcast. And ultimately, through <laughs> going through the program, realized, you know what? I don't really know this audience. This is really not what I want to be talking about. I'm going to pivot. So she started the Black Wall Street Podcast. And then within four months, surpassed 100,000 downloads. BBC News reached out to her to interview her and produce a four minute short video with her narrating the story of the Tulsa race massacre. This all came because of her podcast and the power of podcast moguls, the power of going through this program and realizing that she needed to pivot. And then finally, the power of podcast moguls <laughs> testimonial comes from Shanitria of the Blunt Blowing Mama podcast, one of my favorite uh, podcast names of all time, Blum Blowing Mama, um, shared this in her IG story. Unprompted, one of the, a previous time when I was promoting the class. And she said, you know, as someone who's one of her podcast mobile students, I can truly say she helped me get Blum Blowing Mama podcast off the ground, grow BBM's IG page. I only had 3K followers when I started her program and through her techniques, I've grown organically to over 21,000 engaged followers. She says, because of podcast moguls, I was able to find my tribe. And she even gave me helpful advice when I started the BBM clothing line too. She really knows her stuff. And if you want to really build a successful podcast, then her podcast moguls program is worth the investment. So again, the power of podcast moguls directly from the students. So the doors are open to join podcast moguls today. Again, you have two options. Option one, Join for $9.97, um, pay in full. You get the pay in full bonuses, including a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me. Option two, four monthly payments of $2.97, all right? Oh, and before you ask, this price does go away next Friday, June 23rd at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So remember that. And remember when you pay in full, you receive the pay in full bonuses. Go to sidehustlepro.co slash podcast moguls. Oops. Before we do that, quick recap of what you're getting in the program. Monthly life coaching sessions, annual community access, all of my sponsorship pitch letters and media kit, guest pitch templates, plus master the gram, plus go get our action plan. All right. Thank you guys so much for staying until the end. Q&A starting. Use code HUSTLEPRO to get the rest of this month and all of next month free on Lipson.com. So now let's get into this Q&A, okay? I'm going to keep this up so you guys know where to join, what your options are, but we're jumping into Q&A right now. All right. Welcome, Joy. I'm very excited for your strategy call as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Been listening to my podcast for a year. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you very, very much. And I'm excited to welcome you all in as well, everyone who heads over and joins. Okay. So now let's start with these questions. Quick sip. Oh, and I'm going to stop the recording. Everybody on the recording, thank the, the, the replay, thank you for joining. If you want Q&A, you got to come to the live classes, okay? 
Thank you for watching. All right. So I